in the next 30 minutes, we are going to see how to uh, bring YOLO, which is considered uh, the uh, state-of-the-art real-time object detection, into an Elixir and a Phoenix application. And this talk is not just about uh, machine learning or object detection. It's mainly about interoperability between Elixir and other languages and frameworks. In fact, uh, the main goal of this talk is that is to show that we don't have <coughs> we don't have to reinvent the wheel to bring, uh, for example, cool machine learning features into our Elixir or Phoenix applications. And in this case, we uh, are going to see how to bring some of uh, the features of these frameworks uh, on the right, which are um, um, some of the, the frameworks uh, of the great, of the set of machine learning and data, and data science frameworks uh, of Python. And um, to have a nice syntax, elix elixir syntax like this one on the left. So in, uh, in this example, we will see uh, how to use uh, Elixir with a syntax like this to detect objects in, uh, uh, in an image and uh, frames coming from a camera to have a nice, uh, synth uh, to have a nice result like this. Uh, so a list of detected objects with labels and uh, coordinates. So uh, there are many ways of doing uh, interrupt. Uh, we are going to see uh, how to use Elixir ports to uh, launch um, a Python script uh, and communicate with it uh, and exchanging messages with this Python script. And obviously, at the end, a simple example of how to bring uh, real-time object detection. So we will see how to bring it inside uh, a Phoenix web application and deal with uh, web camera uh, frames. So let's start from the beginning. What is object detection? So uh, it's uh, the goal is to get uh, to detect the objects and uh, in, in an image and get uh, two things um, for each object the coordinates of these bounding box and the label. The label is the classification of uh, the object like the bicycle or the truck. So we are going to use uh, YOLO, which as I said is considered state of the art uh, uh, real time object detection system because uh, it's a neural network uh, and uh, with just a single pass, we, we are able to detect uh, many objects inside uh, the image. And uh, we want to start, so the idea is to uh, start from the left with an image and get the results in Elixir, uh, like the results on the right, a list of objects. So we're able to render uh, these bounding boxes and uh, the labels. And obviously we are not going to uh, build YOLO ourselves. Um, and we are going to use CVLib, which is a Python library, uh, a high-level library that uses uh, OpenCV under the hood and um, a pre-trained generic YOLO v3 model, which uh, was trained uh, on the Coco dataset. And uh, this model is capable of detecting 80 common objects. The cool thing about this library is that with just one line, uh, with just this function, we're able to detect, uh, to get the boxes, the coordinates of the boxes and the labels. So let's see how it works. You should see, tell me if you should see uh, my screen, the code uh, here. So uh, this is a simple, a simple uh, Python script, and it's uh, we see that we just import uh, OpenCV 
and this library, Civilib, we load our image and the image is this one. So it's a sample image with kites and people. And we see that there are also really small kites in the image and also uh, people that are, are far away. So, um, and we just use this, uh, this, um, this function to get the boxes and the labels and we print the boxes and the labels. So let's try it and see how much time it takes. So it's taking quite a bit. And uh, well, first we see that is detecting many people and many kites with the coordinates, which is good, but it's taking a few seconds. And if we want to use it with a web camera, uh, this uh, script is not really uh, going to be useful because we can't use it uh, every time that uh, we can't use it every time for each single frame coming from the camera, especially if we want to reach few frame per second or the ideal uh, 25 to 30 frame per second. Um, so the good news is that if we uncomment this code here and we try two times the detection and uh, we see how much time it takes each detection, Let's try it out. Okay, so the detection, the second detection takes uh, only uh, 260 uh, milliseconds. So the reason is because uh, most of the time is spent loading uh, the libraries and the model into memory. The first detection actually loads the, uh, the, the model into memory. So, The, obviously we, uh, obviously we can't use that script uh, for each single frame. We have to uh, use a long running process. And uh, with the long running process, uh, we load the first time, we load uh, OpenCV, CVLib and the YOLO v3 into memory. And then uh, the, this process is ready to receive images and detect uh, the objects on the fly. So how fast is YOLO? On this computer is uh, MacBook Pro 2018 and it's using the OpenCV implementation with the CPU. Uh, it's well optimistically uh, 200 milliseconds. We saw that, that uh, it took 260, it really depends uh, by the image obviously. To get a similar performance on the cloud uh, we need a C5 for X large, but we're uh, a neural network uh, and this uh, and this time uh, a YOLO uh, really shines with GPUs. With an NVIDIA GTX 1080 and a framework that uses the GPU like a Darknet framework, which was written in uh, C and CUDA, we're able to uh, run the detection at less than 30 milliseconds. So this means that with a GPU like this one, we are able to run at uh, uh, more than uh, 30 frames per second. And uh, the cool thing is that we can also run uh, TensorFlow or Darknet uh, on an NVIDIA on embedded devices like the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, which is this uh, guy here, this little guy here. And um, with the GPU, uh, it, uh, it's able to run uh, uh, at two frames per second, two detections per second. Um, so it's a convenient way to uh, do real time uh, object detection on an embedded device. If we need to run faster uh, with the hardware we have, we, are, we can use a smaller model and with small, I mean, uh, a less number of layers in the neural network. Uh, there is a faster model, uh, which is the tiny YOLO, and it runs on this computer with the CPU at uh, 30 frames per second, and on this NVIDIA Jetson Nano at around 25 frames per second. Um, but at the expense of the accuracy. Uh, we see on the left the full YOLO, and uh, we see that is it, it, it takes, it um, detects much more people and kites. It's not just that uh, it's, it, it detects 
many more objects, it's also that we see the bounding box is also much more accurate. So we saw what to use on the Python side to do uh, object detection. Let's see what we need on the Elixir side. So we are going to use Elixir parts, which are a mechanism to start to launch an operating system process, which is external to the beam and communicate with this, uh, with this process via message passing. So let's consider we have uh, an Elixir process and this process opens a port. So this port launches, in this case, a Python script and communicates, and they communicate via standard input and standard output. So the Elixir process will receive, uh, will receive data from Python and the port will deliver the data to the process mailbox. So let's see a real example, a simple example. Let's consider we have um, a Python script uh, that gets this input. So it's just a string, it's a line with a few values, a few numbers. And what it does, it, this Python script uh, receives from Elixir um, via the port. So it reads this line, it splits the values and converts them into integers, uh, sum uh, the, the values, get the result, and what it does is writes to the standard output and the port reads uh, reads this message, this line, and sends the data into uh, the Elixir process uh, mailbox. So I have a demo for that, for this, and also we are going to see the sum script. So uh, this is the uh, the Python script, and we see that we just read the lines. Uh, from the standard input, we strip the new line. So we detect the end of file because it's a way of uh, breaking the loop. If, for example, the, uh, the, um, the port is closed, uh, it, when, the, when we close the port, uh, an end of file is sent to, uh, to the script, we just split the line into values, we convert the values into integers, and we get the result. And at the end, we sum the, um, we sum the, um, uh, we sum the values and we print, uh, we write the, the result uh, in the standard, uh, in the standard uh, output with a new line. So we use a new line in this case too as a delimiter of the messages. So let's see how it works. So we run the interactive Elixir shell. So we open a port with this command, port open, spawn, the command we want to spawn, in this case, the sum script, and uh, the binary option, which means we are sending binaries, and uh, we send the example. So command 257, with a new line. So, well, first uh, here we see that there should be a Python process running the sum script. And uh, here I should expect we have received um, a message and with the result. So I flush the, uh, the mailbox of the process and we see that there is the result. And we can use this receive block to pattern match the result and uh, to just return the result. So let's try it again. So, and we just have the result. So how we can uh, use uh, this, um, uh, the part to write our detect script. Uh, so in this way, we are able to uh, run the detection of the of, uh, object detection uh, in the in the images 
So we send, the idea is to send uh, the images from the Elixir process to the Python script, and the Python script runs the detection and returns and writes back um, and sends back uh, the result. So, uh, the well, first, uh, uh, we are not going to use the standard input and standard output. Well, first is because uh, there, um, any of the Python library we're going to use could write on the standard output, so this would mess up with the communication. And we are going to use the file descriptors three and four. Um, by uh, using different file descriptors, uh, we can use the standard output and standard error, obviously, to print the bugging messages. And in Elixir, it's quite simple to switch to these two uh, file descriptors. So we just need to uh, use this option when opening the port. And in Python, we just need these two, uh, this function. So to open the uh, file descriptor three in read uh, binary mode and uh, for the input and uh, the four for the output in write binary mode. And we are sending images so we can use the new line as a message separator. We could convert, use base 64 encoding, but this would bring obviously 33% of uh, size overhead. So we are going to use a header, a four bytes header, uh, where we, uh, where we uh, write, uh, where we put the size of the payload of our message. And the cool thing is that uh, with ports, we just, we, we, we can um, add this option, packet four, and this means that it's going, uh, the port will automatically, uh, every time we send a message, will automatically uh, prepend a um, four bytes header with the size of the payload. And also the ports will expect to receive data from the Python script uh, with uh, this header, four bytes header, for each message. We are also going to send an image ID along with the image itself. Uh, it's a 16 bytes uh, unique uh, image ID. Uh, in this way, we can, um, uh, we can distinguish uh, the different requests. So the total size will be, uh, of the payload will be the 16 bytes plus the image size. So uh, the detect script itself is quite simple. So we have these five functions. And uh, the first is to open uh, the file descriptors. And uh, then we need to receive, uh, read the message from the input file object. So instead of uh, reading the line, we read at first the, the, the header, the four, four bytes. We convert the header into an integer, so we know the total size of the payload of the message. Uh, we read 16 bytes for the image ID, and then we use the total message size to read the rest of uh, the message to get the image data. The image data can be a JPEG or or a ping or a TIFF. So we convert this binary to a row uh, NumPy array. So our row image with these two lines. And then we return um, the image ID and the image. So the detect is pretty simple. It just takes the image and this model is an argument, but it's just a string with the model we want. In this case, YOLOV3 or YOLOV3 tiny. And uh, it just runs the it just runs the detection, so it, we get boxes and labels, and uh, just returns boxes and labels. And uh, this function writes the result. Uh, so what it does is to, uh, for simplicity, we use uh, JSON encoding. So we encode the result. So there is the shape of the image, which is a property of the NumPy array. Uh, it's something we get for free when we have the image uh, in memory. And uh, so we send the shape, uh, the boxes and the labels. And we also want to send the image ID. So the, uh, the header will be with the total size uh, will be the 16 bytes plus the, the result. So we send the header, we send the image ID, and we send the result. The run 
the run function, it's actually, uh, it uses all the, the functions we already seen. Uh, set up IO to open the file descriptors, uh, read the message. Uh, so message has uh, an image and the image ID. We get the shape, we detect uh, the, uh, the, the objects in the, in the image, and we write the result back to uh, the Elixir port. So let's see how it works in reality. So this is the script. And uh, we just open the port. So open, uh, running the detect script with uh, no use standard IO and packet four. Okay. Then we read the image. A random, really random <laughs> image ID, uh, 16 bytes. And then we send, uh, instead of concat concatenating the image ID with the image, we send, uh, we pass to command an IO list. So what it does is just send uh, this like concatenated, uh, a concatenated binary. And now I would expect something back. And we see that the result, the first 16 bytes are our uh, image ID, and then it should be the JSON result. So we use the receive block and pattern matching to get just the result. So if we do it again, and we use command, and we use the uh, receive block, we see that we receive the, the JSON, uh, the JSON um, result. So we, have, we are almost there. We have almost everything we need. And so uh, instead of just using the, uh, the port, uh, we need to wrap it with a uh, gen server. Uh, it, it brings many advantages. Well, first is that uh, the port uh, can communicate only with the, communicates only with the owner process, and the owner process is the one that opens the, the port. Then, if we have a gen server, we can, uh, this process, this gen server can uh, manage multiple asynchronous detection, uh, different requests coming from different processes, and, uh, uh, and the same gen server also takes care of the communication with the, with the port and the, the text script. And also it becomes really easy with the gen server to supervise this port. So if, for example, um, the Python script crashes, we are able to uh, launch, uh, uh, restart it. Uh, and obviously this model is going to uh, hide the complexity of this communication and handling multiple asynchronous requests behind an easy interface. And with the, with the gen server, uh, it's also, it becomes easy to spawn a pool of uh, workers and also distributed workers uh, to spawn a, a pool of workers, for example, uh, with a library like uh, pool boy. And uh, uh, so uh, this is a quick schema, uh, quick diagram to show how the YOLO worker uh, uh, works. And um, so, for example, if we have uh, a process that needs uh, to request a detection, so it sends the image using this function here. So the YOLO worker receives a call message and uh, uh, what it does, it, uh, it, it to uh, save the image ID and uh, to keep the image ID and the requesting PID uh, process ID in memory while the Python script the, runs the detection. So in this way, we are able to send multiple requests to the worker and the uh, Python detect script. And the Python script, uh, uh, sends back uh, the result. So the worker uh, looks for uh, the image ID and sends back uh, the, uh, the result to the requesting process. So let's see 
how it works. And this is the, so you find all the, all this code uh, in the GitHub repository. You saw at the beginning and, and, and the end and the final slide of this talk. But the important thing is that we just open the port here. We keep the port obviously open and in memory uh, and the state is an empty, uh, an empty map at the beginning. When we request a detection, uh, a unique uh, ID is uh, generated, 16 bytes. We send uh, this message uh, to uh, the worker, to the gen server and when we handle this message, we just, the, the worker just sends the, the request, so the image ID and the image data to the port, so to the, uh, the text script, and it keeps in memory the image ID and the requesting PID. And it also replies with the image ID just to acknowledge that the request uh, has kept in consideration. And when the worker receives the result um, from the Python script, so the port sends this message. We already seen uh, the image ID and the JSON string. And uh, with this function get results, we just uh, transform the JSON string in, in, into a nice uh, result map. And we pop the, uh, the, the PID, the requesting PID and the uh, image ID from the, uh, from the state map. And um, we send a detected this message to the requesting PID just to say, okay, this is the result. Uh, uh, I've detected uh, the image you requested for and uh, with the result. So let's see how it works. Uh, the detect script obviously is the same. We, the, the one we are, we've already seen. So this time I use mix and we start the worker. We start the worker. So the worker opens the port, uh, which launches the Python script. We load the image and we request the detection. So this returns a random a unique image ID. And I expect, so the, uh, the worker should have um, sent the result in. Uh, so this is, I flush the uh, process mailbox and we see that the third element of the, of the tuple is our result. And we can use uh, also the await function, passing the image ID just to, uh, that uses the, uh, the receive uh, block and pattern matches the image ID. So just to get the result. Great, so this, we can use this to, uh, and to uh, in a Phoenix application. So this is a simple example, but just to show how we can use these features in an interesting way. Uh, the, uh, the, the easiest way uh, to the easiest way to uh, get uh, frames from a camera and uh, to render the results are for are using a, a browser. So uh, we have uh, we use uh, uh, webcam JS uh, uh, to get the camera uh, the web um, the webcam frames and we send. Uh, so the front end sends the frames to uh, a webcam channel uh, process, which uses what we've already seen. So the YOLO worker to run the, um, the detection, object detection, and it asynchronously uh, receive the, receives the results from the worker. And the channel process will send back the results to the, uh, front end, which will render the boxes and the labels. So let's see how it works in reality. So it should be this. Okay. So the, the channel is pretty simple. We just, this handle in receives the frames. We run the detection and, uh, we, uh, and, uh, when we receive the result from the worker, we just push 
the detected event with the result. So it's a naive implementation, but it works at one frame per second. So this is the webcam JS. It just pushes the frames and uses the uh, webcam JS um, uh, library. And what it does is to draw the result uses, uh, using a canvas. So let's see. Okay. Yeah, so if we start, you should see me. Okay, it's detecting me. And I have, as always, here like a bottle. I don't know if, uh, yeah, I have a remote. <laughs> I have a remote, not knife. No, no, it's not a knife. Uh, a remote, okay, great. Um, so it works, but uh, what happens if, if uh, I, turn this to, for example, 10. And this is just a start. We can start working on it. Uh, so what happens, for example, if, I, uh, I, if we run it uh, at a 10 frame per second? So what happens is that it should, we should have quite huge delays. So yeah, you start seeing that it stopped, it stopped working straight away. Uh, it's in queuing all the frames and obviously the worker, yeah, you see, and obviously can't track me uh, because the, because the, um, the worker can't keep up with the, uh, with the detections in this computer can run barely three, four detections per second. So uh, what we're going to do is to drop the frames. So there is another, um, here another, uh, so instead of using the naive implementation, we can use, and you find the code in the repository, we use uh, another version which just drops the frames when the worker is busy. So let's see, uh, I keep 10 frames per second and we see that the, the worker, the system will adapt at three, four frames per second because it will drop the frames. So we see that it's much more, it's, it's snappier. So I have a bottle here, like a remote or knife, cell phone. Mm, okay, I have to maybe show the buttons. So you see that it's, it's snappier. So, This, uh, it's, it was just a simple example, but uh, it's just an example of showing how we can uh, bring other functionalities, like in this case, uh, uh, object detection, but we, we can easily bring with parts other functionalities like face detection, face recognition, um, also on embedded devices like the Jetson Nano and uh, Ports are, I think, a really great way to uh, expand our uh, world, um, uh, our Elixir and Erlang applications. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Awesome presentation. And yeah, you can get surprisingly far with uh, ports. It's, um, like it turns out that the message passing is a really, really good idea because when you see everything as message passing, then um, the world is your oyster, if you can send messages to your oyster. And, and yeah, the ports make it uh, easy to, to see an external system as uh, an actor that you can send messages to. So I think we have, um, I cannot see any questions in the uh, Hoover app. Okay. Oh, there. Oh, let me see. I think there's one now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Did you find any other ways to do ML with Elixir Erlang? Yes. Uh, well, uh, I would. So, uh, yes, there are, for example, uh, uh, NIFs, but there is also a talk, I think today or tomorrow, uh, that uh, I've seen just the title that says that. Uh, 
uh, NIFs are dangerous, especially if re when retaining C. And uh, so there are other ways. I think, well, what I aim usually is to go with the simplest um, way. I think parts make everything really simple and it's a generic way of uh, facing this problem. It's not just for machine learning. Uh, so a library uh, that uses, uh, which is a binding to TensorFlow is called TensorFlex. But obviously in that case, you will have to build your uh, neural network yourself. So load the model using TensorFlow and TensorFlex, TensorFlex directly. Um, there are other ways like, um, I think, I never tried it, but there is um, a service, uh, uh, it's possible, uh, it's called, uh, uh, it's a way of using TensorFlow as a service. Um, so to send messages, uh, uh, to send messages, uh, I don't remember if like via protobuf or, but um, it's possible to send messages to a, a, a TensorFlow service only to run, um, only to run, um, to not to train the neural network, but uh, to uh, run the classification. So to uh, to run a, a pass of neural network. So you get the input and get the the classification. Um, and uh, but I haven't tried this this way. Uh, there, uh, the cool thing about parts, uh, not because I want to insist about parts, is because. Uh, it makes super easy to generalize uh, these kind of wrappers. Um, and uh, it's also super fast because using message passing uh, and, uh, um, and uh, file descriptors, uh, it's uh, what, what it did is to uh, run few experiments uh, and I was able to easily get frames uh, from uh, uh, from the Python script. So the Python script uh, access the camera, runs the classification on the, uh, and the object detection on the frames, on the camera, on a device, like an embedded device. And through a port, I was able to easily receive uh, row frames. So each frame is around three megabytes. So at uh, 30 or 60 frames per second and uh, without any delay. Um, so uh, I think at the end, uh, uh, um, I, at the end is, a, is a great way to proceed, especially at the beginning.